Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, today I'm in a bit of a different location. I'm actually in my car right now. Today I thought I would do a car tour for you because as I mentioned in my last weekly vlog, recently bought a new car and I'm very excited about it. I'm in a public car park right now so I'm a bit concerned that someone's gonna like come over and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so awkward. But anyway, I have a Fiat 500 2010 Pop Edition. So if you're looking into getting a Fiat 500 then this is the video for you because before I bought this car I was obsessed with watching these videos. So today I thought I would show you mine and and if you have any like specific questions or I miss anything out, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will reply to them. So let's get into my car. I've made notes on my phone so I don't forget to mention anything. Right, so as I said, it is a Fiat 500 2010 Pop and it is a three door, all Fiat 500s are, and it has a 1.2 litre engine which I think is a pretty standard size for a small car. This is actually the second car that I've had and I passed my test last year. I started off with a manual and now I've switched to automatic, so that is why I have changed my car. And there are two types of Fiat 500s. There are Pops and there are Lounges. The reason I went for the Pop was mostly because I found one that was local to me and it was a lot cheaper than a Lounge. It basically just means it's like the model of car before the Lounge came out. And since getting this car, I found that my insurance is really low. I went with the cheapest insurance I could find, which was the Co-op, and I've been really happy with them. They they have really good service. I have a black box in my car and the service for getting that fitted was really quick and easy. So I would definitely recommend the co-op. This isn't a sponsor by the way. So yeah, I have my black box and that has brought my insurance down a lot. So if you are a new driver, I would recommend getting a black box in your car. My road tax for this car is £20 a year, which is ridiculously cheap. And it only costs me £30 to fill up the tank of petrol. It is a ridiculously cheap car, which is why so many people have them. And they look cute, which is a bonus. The reason I went for this particular car was because it was a really good buy. It was really really cheap for what it is. It had only had one owner which was an elderly lady and because of that reason it's only done 12,000 miles which is like not a lot at all. I love the colour of it. I believe mine is called metallic grey. There are a couple of different greys that Fiat do and I believe mine is the metallic. It's like the darkest grey that they do and I've also found that in this car it has really good vision around all the windows. In my old 2013 KA which looked like this it was a lot harder to see out of the back windows but this one is really light and airy which is obviously a bonus. So I think that's all the chatting that I need to do about the logistics of the car. So now I'm going to show you it. So this is what the interior looks like. This is the colour of my car. I really like the colour of the seats in this car because they are dark so they're not going to get dirty easily. Whereas in the Fiat 500 lounges quite often they are that checkered print or that dog's tooth and I don't like that because they always look dirty. They get dirty so easily. Everyone says that. So I was really happy that this car has grey seats but they do have the lighter top so so like when you look from outside the car it looks like it's a really light car but it's also like light and practical so first of all i'll start off and go through this section with you so obviously these are the air vents for the air con and this whole section is the radio if i just turn this on it comes up with fiat let's mute you a minute so you can pre-program your radio as with most cars so on mine one is radio one two is radio two three is heart four is bbc essex i never listened to that and five is capital which is the one i listen to the most and six is lbc i don't know what that is and then obviously over here you have the volume so the passenger can really easily do that there is also a cd option i don't have a cd in there right now and then over here is the menu so this is just like all the different options i haven't really played around with this to be honest like I don't really need this. In the newer Fiat's there is now a screen here which looks really nice but this is all I need for now. And then underneath here we have the city button so basically if you press that the steering is a lot lighter so it's easier to manoeuvre, it's easier to park. If you live in a city then that would be really handy. I don't so I don't really need it. So I don't have that on but I know a lot of people do. There is your hazards obviously and then this is your fog lights although on my car the fog lights are automatic so if you want to turn them off then you do that but otherwise they're already on. This is the air con, so obviously cold and hot. This is how much you want the air con on, so if you want it off, I usually have mine on one, but I'll turn it off for this video, that's probably really annoying. And then it goes all the way up to four, and obviously that does the windscreen as well. This is whether you want new air to come into the car or if you want to recirculate the air. I recently found out that if you're going through like a really polluted area, you should have it on this option, but for the most part, I have mine on bringing new air into the car. That was such a technical way to explain that. And then this dial down here is where you want the air directed. So you've got to your face, to your face and your feet, to just your feet, 
to your feet and your windscreen or just to your windscreen. I tend to keep it on this one. That seems like a good option to me. And then over here, this is the start stop button. So basically if I'm not moving, if I'm like still in traffic, then the engine will cut off to save petrol. It's more economical, but I do not like that. It really distracts me when I'm driving. So I always press that and turn it off before I get in the car. And then this button is to defog the back window. This is my gear stick. So like I said, I drive automatic, but this is a semi-automatic car. So basically it's in neutral now, which you put it in when you park. I'll just show you how it works actually. So when I wanted to drive, I would put this in the middle and on the dash over here it says one auto because it's in the automatic version over here where it says a slash m if i slide that across it now just says one so it's in the manual section really and then the plus and the minus are to go into the second gear and then back to the first so you can only go into first and second gear but i never have it on manual i always have it on automatic and then obviously that is reverse but i'm gonna put that back into neutral because i'm parked right now so that's how the semi automatics work on the fiat's these two buttons here are for the windows so over on your doors you don't actually have any window switches on this door there are these two little buttons which control the mirror so i can use these to tilt the mirrors up and down obviously you've got your handle and you just push them in to lock it, which is good if you're in a bit of a rough area. I really like having the window buttons over here. I think it's really convenient. And obviously because I drive an automatic, I only have two pedals as you can see down here. So that is the brake and that is the accelerator. There is no clutch. So my life is made very simple by not having a gear stick. So above this little section, we have obviously the rear view mirror. You obviously just tilt it to wherever you want it. And then this little flick, you can flick forward. So if you're driving at nighttime and someone behind you has their full beams on and it's like blinding you, you just flick that and you'll be able to see where you're going. But you literally only use that if you are blinded by the person behind you. So that is my view of the rear view mirror. That's my view from the side and that's my view from that side. So those are like the middle buttons done. Now, if we move over to the steering wheel, this is what it looks like on the lounge additions they have some buttons on the steering wheel there is like turn the volume up and down they have a feature called blue and me which is like siri basically and they have a mute button and then like menu search and stuff over this side but i don't really need that i'm fine with this and if i want to turn it up and down i'll just use that <laughs> and then obviously the horn is here or i'm not sure if it's actually this button or if it's here i don't know i've not used the horn yet so if i just turn the key to turn the ignition on this is what comes up on the dashboard. I really like that everything is in one place on this car. It's got some lights on right now because I don't have my seatbelt on and stuff like that. I really like that it's all in the middle. Usually with cars, there's like a circle here and a circle here and a circle here, you get me? But it's also really easy to view through my steering wheel. There's glass here so you can't touch it, but this is how much petrol I have. I'm gonna need to fill in up very soon. This is obviously like I've explained the automatic, the time, the date, the mileage that I've done, the temperature, and then I think this is the temperature of the engine or something like that, I'm not sure. This black one is your rev counter, and this one around the edge is your speed, so how fast you're going. Over here there are some more menu buttons, but that pretty much is the dashboard in a nutshell. I really like that it. it's so easy to understand. And then this lever is your lights, so if you put your headlights on, you get the little light come up there, or when you indicate, obviously they come up like either side you push the lever back to put your full beams on but you don't have that on often and yeah that's pretty much the lights and then the other side you have your windscreen wipers so i'm not actually going to like do this because it's not raining right now but basically you put your wipers on for the front or for the back you push it up for the wipers to come on once and then there are three sections downwards that you can push it so you push it once for slow wipers again for like mid wipers and again for fast wipers there's also this little button on the end of the stick and if i press that you will see it changes like the information on the dashboard over here i've got a little air freshener i got this on amazon it's just like a febreze one it smells really nice though that's obviously where your key goes in so this is what the key looks like you've got unlock lock and then to open the boot this just presses in like so and then you press it for it to come out and then i've just got my key rings on there this official fiat key ring was still on the keys when i got it like from the original owner which i think is so cool and yeah that's my keys. There's a little like pocket here, but I don't keep anything in that. There's also another one down here, but again, I don't keep anything in there. Down by my door though, I do keep this little pink cloth because if the windows have like fogged up or something, it's really handy to have a cloth so you can just wipe the windows. So that lives in there. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that I don't have an aux cord in this car. However, I am going to get one fitted. I've got to take it back to Fiat and they can just like turn the feature on. And I think the aux cord will come out of here somewhere, but I'm not too sure yet. So this car doesn't have an aux cord 
cord or Bluetooth, so I can't connect my phone as of yet, but I will be able to after I get that changed. And this car also doesn't have a sunroof, and the lounges do, but I don't mind that. I feel like it would be quite distracting if like the sun was beaming down on you. Eventually, I'm also gonna get things like an iPhone holder to clip in here, a camera mount for if I'm filming like drive with me's, and maybe something for a sat nav over here to go on the window, but that's all things that I will like add to the car. So now I'm gonna move on to the good bit of what I actually keep in my car. So down here we have a pot of chewing gum for me and any guests that I might have. And I have this little air freshener from Yankee Candle. This is in the scent Black Cherry. I absolutely love it. The Yankee Candle ones smell really strong, so I absolutely love this. Most people hang it up here, but I didn't want to because I think that's a bit distracting. So I just keep mine down there. This is the cigarette lighter where you can plug your phone in to charge, so that's all I use that for. Obviously you have the handbrake, and then back here are some more cup holders. But in here I actually have some hand sanitizer. Very handy, haha, <laughs> pardon the pun. And then I over here is the glove box but it's like an open glove box so I don't keep too much in here. The first thing that I have is a packet of baby wipes. I know that seems a bit random but because I have a cream steering wheel if my hands are dirty then this is going to get really dirty and every now and again I can just wipe the steering wheel if it's looking a bit grubby. So I've got the baby wipes in there for my hands. Right I have this spray from Bath and Body Works so that if my car smells of like McDonald's or something I can give it a little spritz before someone gets in it. Or I can give myself a spritz. This smells really nice. Also in here, I have a spare phone charger and this little thing that I got on Amazon. And this is what plugs into the cigarette lighter. So yeah, I can charge my phone. And that's one that I just keep in my glove box so that I always have a charger with me. In here, I also have a spare pair of sunglasses. Obviously, I don't need these right now, but in the summer, if it's really sunny and you can't really see where you're driving, these will come in very handy in an emergency. These are just some old Topshop ones that I have. And then the final thing that I have in here are a packet of Werther's. I don't know if it's just me that thinks this, but I think that Werther's are such a car sweet. I've never had Werther's and not been in the car. So I thought I would contribute to tradition and keep a packet of Werther's in there for my guests. They are delicious. So if you come in my car, you can have sweets and a chewing gum. Lucky you. So that is everything that is in the glove box. So there's quite a lot of like stuff in there. Obviously all the essentials. <laughs> Underneath the glove box you can see that that is where one of the speakers are and that is the passenger door. And there is also a little mirror on here for my passengers. And then this is what the back of the car looks like. So obviously it's a four seater but you could quite easily fit two grown adults in there like quite comfortably. I don't have headrests. I don't know why it doesn't come with headrests but it doesn't. But I think the back of it looks really nice and open and really spacious for a small car actually and they've got a speaker and a little armrest in the back so that's everything that is inside my car so I'm now going to show you the outside her name is Flora so I'll show you the outside of Flora and I will also show you what I keep in the boot so let's go and have a look outside so this is what she looks like from the outside I think it's a really nice color I really like this gray this is what she looks like from the front very cute it's such a small little car I love it this is the passenger side that's what the inside looks like from the outside very nice Nice and light and airy and this is what she looks like from the back so the petrol cap is on the driver's side on this car so I'm just gonna quickly show you that so if I open it up it's really easy to open excuse the petrol that I've just spilt in there <laughs> standard and then you need your key to open it so you just put your key in and then twist it and open that up but when you open it there's also a little like latch and you can hook it on here so when you're filling up your petrol you don't have to hold your key oh, and then I'll just quickly show you if you unlock it it makes a little noise and the lights flash so that's unlocked and then if you want to relock it it makes a slightly louder noise and the lights flash again so you know it's locked right so now i'm going to show you what's in the boot i'll just dump my keys in there for a minute so this is what the boot looks like it is quite a big boot like i was quite pleasantly surprised by this you could definitely fit like a suitcase or some primark bags in there i think it's deceivingly big and obviously you can take this bit off and i'm pretty sure you can push the seats forward as well don't hold me to that but i think you can the only thing is that the door comes down like on a tilt so you probably couldn't put anything in there that like stuck out square but the actual like space of the boot is quite roomy so in here i have a spare asda bag for if i pop to the shops i also have a blank Kit. I just got this from the range it was like six pound so that if I ever break down I've got something to keep me a little bit warmer or if I go for a picnic you know either way and then this is a little bag that I got from Amazon and this is like basically my emergency kit for if I break down or if anything happens so I'll show you what's inside there let's just move this stuff into the back this is what it looks like from the back by the way it looks like quite big from the back it's a really little car but 
yeah it's deceivingly spacious so I actually purchased like an emergency kit for if you break down and this red thing came in it this is just like a little triangle that you put on the side of the road so that cars can see that you've broken down it's like reflective and stuff so I've just got that sitting there even though I don't really need it I thought well it came with a kit so I might as well keep it in my car like I said I got this bag on Amazon I'll link it down below it's really handy it doesn't really take up any room in your boot like I still have all this room here it looks a lot bigger on camera than it actually is like it doesn't take up a lot of room at all it's like the same material as the boot as well and on the bottom of it it also has velcro so it's not going to fall over in the back of your car then if I open it up I'll show you what I keep inside this is a little bit excessive I'm not gonna lie because I am such an overthinker so the first thing I have is this waterproof jacket in a little bag so that if I'm on the side of the road I have something to at least keep me dry oh by the way before I empty it out under here is the spare tire and I also have some um, tow ropes under there so that I can be towed or someone can use them to tow someone else so that's the spare tire and the tow ropes so I've got my waterproof jacket I have some little hand warmers my dad said these were a good idea so got them in there i have another pink cloth i got these on amazon as well there was like a pack of five for like three pounds so i'll leave a link to those in the description down below i know it's a bit extra having pink ones but what can you do i have a big can of de-icer in here because i live in england and it's freezing in the winter so this is definitely going to come in handy next winter and then i also have this ice scraper to scrape my windows i've got a couple of pairs of gloves so if me and a friend are like freezing somewhere then i've got some gloves in my boot the emergency kit came with a high-vis jacket i'm fully aware that i'm never going to use this but i thought well it's in the emergency kit so i might as well stick it in that makes me look so extra i have a little umbrella I feel like this will be one of the most handy things in here. A packet of tissues, a bottle of water. I think this is a really good idea to have. I have an energy bar in case I get peckish. <laughs> I'm always hungry so this is definitely going to be eaten at some point. I have these jump leads so basically I'm not sure how to use these but if my car breaks down or the battery goes flat something like that I've been told that I will need these so they are also in the bag. I have a little portable first aid kit this has got like bandages, antiseptic wipes, plasters, um, tweezers. This is a hundred piece kit I got it on Amazon and it's just for like little minor injuries if I'm out and about with people so I'm like a portable doctor also. Me and my Fiat are going to provide. <laughs> I also I have a little notebook and pen I've been told this is good to have in your car in case you have an accident so you can take down any details about the other person another packet of tissues I didn't know that was in there I have some duct tape because if anything like falls off my car or there's a hole in anything I don't know I feel like duct tape would just be handy in any situation so I've got a roll of that I have a little torch if I ever need that oh look we have more food <laughs> a little whistle came with the emergency kit so that's in there and then finally I have this thing which like pumps up flat tires so just temporarily like if my tire is flat I can put this little red thing into my tire and then you put this on the floor and just pump it up that would be very handy I've been told that this is probably one of the best things I have in my car so all of this was in that little bag this is the emergency kit I've now got to put all of this back in so that'll be fun but yeah I think this is a good idea and I know it seems a little bit extra but I know that in Sweden it is compulsory to have a kit like this in your car so I can't be going far wrong so that's everything that is in the boot of my car obviously when this is all inside the bag then this boot is going to be full of like shopping bags and stuff I did it I'm all tidy again so yeah all of that is in this little bag and I still have all this room for my other goods so that brings us to the end of this car tour I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing what's inside my car and getting to know all about it and if you're looking at buying your first car I hope this video was helpful to you I absolutely loved watching videos like this and I learned so much from them so yeah I hope it's helped at least one of you out I absolutely love my little flora me and her are going to go on some right adventures this summer I can tell you that so yeah thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe so you can see my summer vlogs because I'm going to be taking Flora out and about so I'm sure you'll get to see some more of her then like I said if you have any questions at all then let me know down in the comments below I will be reading them and I will reply to every single question but anyway thanks for watching I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you again in my next video bye right let's drive home it is freezing today I definitely need a cup of tea